Good afternoon. Welcome to the virtual college exploration for all North and South Carolina students presented by the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers and StriveScan. We appreciate you all joining us today. Just a few housekeeping announcements. Your microphone and video screen are turned off so the presenter will not be able to hear or see you, but you can answer, ask your questions by typing into the Q&A feature. Um, this is just one of many sessions that will be going on for the next several weeks, so please view the full schedule at CACRO.org, that's C-A-C-R-A-O dot org. Um, this, view, uh, this presentation will also be able to be viewed on demand and uh, able to be viewed um, later at that same website, C-A-C-R-A-O dot org. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenter. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Casey Smile. I'm an admissions counselor at Mount St. Mary's University in Emmitsburg, Maryland. Um, I'm also a proud Mount alum, class of 20. So it wasn't too long ago that I was in your shoes, deciding what college to choose, um, going through that process. But I'm really excited to have you all here today, um, learn a little bit about Mount St. Mary's. So our session will be divided into three basic sessions. Um, the first one will just be talking about student life. The second one will, will cover academics and then the third will cover the application process. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that and we can get started. Okay, so first to just cover some demographics about the Mount. We have a undergraduate student body of just under 2,000 students, so 1898. We are 50-50, um, our ratio male to female. And we represent 44 states and 37 countries. So we are all over the map, even though we are pretty small. And 68% of our students do live on campus, so that's something we are pretty proud of. Um, and you will hear a lot throughout the presentation about all the fun things we have going on on the Mount St. Mary's campus. So our school was founded 212 years ago by Father John Dubois when he fled the French Revolution. So he came to actually to Virginia and then headed up north to Maryland and founded our university. So we do have a lot of history here at the Mount and a lot of great connections, which come in very handy for students post-graduation. So 67% of our students are Catholic, but we welcome um, everyone from different types of religions and you are of course, able to practice your religions here on campus. So going into academics, we have over 70 majors and minors, which is a lot for a small school. So our curriculum is divided into, I like to say, three different parts. So one third of our cur curriculum is dedicated to the core. So you will take classes like philosophy, theology, you'll take a basic math class. A third of our curriculum is divided into a flex kind of program. So you can take fun classes, um, an art class if you would like to. And that's really beneficial for students who are coming undecided. And we like to say that undecided majors are our second most popular major. I came in undecided when I was um, a student here at the Mount, and that's great because you have two years to declare a major. So that flex room is really important for students who are looking to, you know, to decide what to major and not quite sure. I started out coming in as an education major. That's what I thought I really wanted to do, and I ended up graduating with a psychology degree. And then a third of our core is also dedicated to your major, of course. So we have our average class size here at the Mount is 18 students. When you may be thinking, wow, that's really small. Why is that important? So that is important because professors really want to de develop and build a relationship with their students. We like to say here at the Mount, you're not just a number. You actually mean something to us. We want you to get involved in our community, get involved inside the classroom and really make an impact here at the Mount. So that's really important for students. I also like to say that it's important for our science majors out there because they actually get to work one on one with the faculty here at the Mount. So you can see the picture down there of the student working with the professor. Really cool fun fact about the Mount that students actually get to work with professors on their research projects that they're 
publishing. So um, a student will be able to work with a professor on a project that could be published in the Journal of Science. And they really get that out of the classroom experience that um, once you graduate, professionals really like to see. So we do have a 13 to one student to faculty ratio. You will not have a class size bigger than 25. Um, and of course, as you declare your major, your class size will start getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Senior year, you might have 12 people in your classes. Um, and again, that's really important for that building that connection with your professor inside and out of the classroom. So 76% of our students will do an internship before they graduate. Why is that important? Well, again, you get that out of the classroom experience that once you graduate, professionals really like to see. I like to tell the story of one of our admissions counselors here. Um, he was a history major um, during his undergraduate education and he knew he wanted to teach third grade history. Well, come junior, senior year, when he did an internship, at a local school in third grade history, he realized he did not like it. He wanted to work with older students. So having, being able to do that internship out of the classroom, it's very important for just figuring out what you would like to do. So professors, um, we have an awesome career center here at the Mount. The faculty will really push you to do an internship before you graduate. Also, it looks really great on a resume. So now moving into student life outside the classroom. What is there to do at the Mount? You guys have probably not heard much about what there is to do in Emmitsburg, Maryland, because there is not a lot to do. We have a lot of cornfields, we say, but we are about an hour outside of Washington, D.C. and Baltimore. We're 15 minutes from Gettysburg, 25 minutes from Frederick. So those are kind of our big cities. But the Mount does a great job making sure students are not bored here. And being a student once myself, I can say there was never a dull moment at the Mount. You are going to have so much fun. So we have over 70 clubs and organizations. So while we still run shuttles to those big cities, um, we'll do New York trips, Washington DC trips for the day, students like to be on campus. I mentioned earlier in the presentation that 68% of our students will live on campus all four years. That's because they like being here. And commuters, people who drive back and forth to school, they will usually stay on the weekends because there's just so much going on. So some of our fun clubs that we have, um, you can see American Chemical Society, Best Buds Club. Um, our Outdoor Adventures Club has never been more popular. There are five new outdoor hiking trails on the Mount itself. We run trips, hike, uh, hiking, camping, kayaking, Stand up paddleboarding, you can see there they're doing rock climbing. Some fun mount traditions that we have. Um, to start the year, we have an all you can eat crab feast. So, for those students who aren't from Maryland, you're going to probably try blue crabs at some point in your life. It's $5. Your parents can come. It's a great mount tradition. We also have our tiki dance. And I know everyone's thinking, oh, great, another school dance. This is not like your high school dances at all. It's so much fun. Pretty much the entire student body will go. And it's just a great time. It goes from 11 to 1 in the morning. It's more of like a tiki lounge, I like to say, more than a dance. So we also have 24 NCAA Division I athletic teams. We are a D1 school. Um, so I like to say food is a pretty big deal on our campus. How a big way students get to go to the games, a big incentive for them to go is through food. So our arenas will sell out for like Chick-fil-A nights, we'll do Chipotle nights and everyone goes and supports their fellow Mount friends. It's a lot of fun. So say you don't wanna play a division one sport. You don't wanna get up at five o'clock in the morning for lifts and then go to five o'clock practice and after class, you can play a club sport so that is Mount students compete against other schools in the area. So Mount St. Mary's, like women's club basketball, they will compete against the University of Maryland, um, William Mary. We have 13 club sports teams here. And if your sport you don't see here, you're always welcome to go down to the club sports office and say, hey, I wanna start this sport or this club here. 
And then, of course, we have our intramural teams as well. So that is Mount students competing against other Mount students. And I will say those games get so competitive. Another big part of what the Mount does in the community is we like to give back. And again, this is a great resume builder. So you will see that 75% of our students still complete some type of service while here at the Mount. And 30% of students hold a leadership position. So whether that just be volunteering for the Mount community or going out of state or staying in Maryland, like serving a local food bank, we really like students to give back to their community because it's a great resume builder. And then also it just feels really good to give back. So guys, I really hope you like what you're hearing so far. If you would love to come visit us, we are open for daily visits, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you would like to apply, here's how the application process works. So we are online at msmary.edu slash apply, and we're also on the Common App. The two required materials are your high school transcript and then also one letter of recommendation that needs to be from a guidance counselor or a teacher. And we always like to tell this story. You can give us one layer of recommendation. You can give us 10 layer recommendations. We will read them all. But every now and then, a student will submit 10 layers of recommendation. And they'll pretty much all say the same thing. So-and-so was excited to come code to the mount. They're hardworking. And then the next one will say they're excited to come to the Mount, they're hardworking. And then the last one will say they're excited to go to University of Maryland. So we like to say sometimes less is more. Um, now we are test optional. So you are, if you would like to submit us your SAT scores, uh, ACT scores. Um, for SAT, our average is 1100. And then ACT, um, 22, 24. We like to say rule of thumb if you're below the average probably don't submit it. Um, if you're very proud of your SAT score above the average, we would love to look at it. Um, also, we have an optional personal essay for all students if they would like to complete that. I recommend doing the personal essay. I think um, the Mount believes that you're more than just a bunch of numbers on the paper. We like to really get to know our students and hear their stories. So I highly recommend you submit a personal essay. But again, those two required materials are the high school transcript and a letter of recommendation from a guidance counselor or a teacher. So to go over timeline, um, we are rolling admissions. So our application is open. The deadline for early action is November 1st. And then our application deadline is March 1st. And then finally, we need to know whether or not you're committing to the school by May 1st. So we understand the mountain is very expensive, but you can afford a private education. So these, this is a list of last year's scholarships. The average financial aid package for students is around $30,000. So as you can see, our students are getting a lot in financial aid. Um, our lowest scholarship is 12,000 all the way up to 29,000. Every student is given some type of scholarship. The factors that play into your scholarship are GPA, extracurricular activities, how hard your course um, load was, all those sorts of things. Again, that's why we like to have that personal essay from everyone um, because those are things you can't tell from your transcript. So if you submit that personal essay, we'll find out more about you. You may receive a higher scholarship. So for FAFSA, um, just some important dates everyone may want to write down. March 1st is the submission deadline. And then January, so we begin for our early action students sending out financial aid packages in January. So you can expect within two weeks of finishing FAFSA, your applications then to receive your financial aid package. All right, guys, so this is the end of our presentation. Um, of course, I would like to open this up for any type of questions that students may have during this time. If not, then I think we are done. Okay. 
All right. Thanks so much for joining <laughs> us today. When you exit sure, out of this. You. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so when you exit out of this window, you'll receive a link to a short four question survey. We appreciate any feedback that you can share with us. Keep in mind that this uh, recording is going to be made viewable and on demand at cacro.org. That's C-A-C-R-A-O.org. Thanks again for joining us today. Great, thank you.